Hello my fellow cheeky scrub lords. First off I would like to congratulate Wargaming.net for its second year anniversary of World of Warships. It is a good game creating MMO naval combat. And secondly, today's video I would like to bring to your attention my top 20 most annoying World of Warships game mechanics and features that should be recognized from playing the game. Now what I have noted here is not game breaking mechanics, it's just that it is annoying to me that these items have not been addressed, resolved, or enhanced to make World of Warships an even more outstanding game. So let us begin. Number 20. Hello all. Today I present a bug that I found involving the quick commands and chat in World of Warships. Number 19.
Now this may be controversial, however if this can be found in the PT server, it will be in the release version of World of Warships. This happens in one for every 20 times, in playing World of Warships in co-op mode. You will get put into a random battle despite you choosing co-op battle mode. Number 18 Number 17 Number 16 First off there is nothing wrong if you want to do the campaign task. However, I prefer not to do what Wargaming is asking for in the task at times. For example in not doing carrier campaign tasks, we the player should have the option to reject the task and get another assigned. It can be capped at rejecting only one mission a day. This can also provide feedback to the World of Warships developers in what campaign task was rejected for examination analysis. Number 15. Hooray finally I completed the mission task and got the flag. Or did I? I'm not seeing anything in the notification window showing that I have received the flag. There it is. Wargaming could you please add the notification for receiving the flag in the GUI notification status. Number 14. We all know the range where we are detected from concealment. However on the mini-map it appears that Wargaming is giving a false impression that we have sight across the map. The sighting arc is too liberal. I would like to have Wargaming lower the sighting arc in the mini-map to the proper expectation range for World of Warships. Number 13. Number 12 Let's go to the training room. Oh wait we can't. We have to configure the preference file. <laughs> Sorry all. The procedure I was going to say is about 3 months old. The new one is listed below. You need to modify the C backslash games backslash world underscore of warships backslash res backslash scripts dot config file. You need to change the entry from true to false. Number 11 Number 10 
Number 9. Hey Wargaming, can you move the notification splash from one side of the screen over to the other side? And could you make that scroll like for its own content? I ask because it slows me down when trying to transfer a commander to another ship, such as a premium ship. I have to wait until the notification splash is gone. Time is credits you know. Ha 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 ha. Number 8. What the Not reserves again. This is not flags and camouflage. Why then am I even choosing a choice? To quote a World of Warships community contributor from the forums, pretty soon I will have to buy a hotel franchise for the amount of spare spots I have in reserve, and run it as a hotel. Shouldn't this reward ship be on the try your luck choice? Why is this reward ship on the signal flags and camo choice? To me now, the crate choices are haphazard in random with their picks. The button choices mean nothing. Number 7. Congratulations commander for eliting your ship. However you can not move that extra ship experience from battles into the commander in hope of increasing their skill points. It's not like World of Tanks, where you can accelerate the crew with the extra tank experience into crew skills. Oh no. The ship experience stays with the ship, until doubloons are paid out for the conversion process. And speaking of the conversion process, there is no filter list to prioritize ships to be converted to your specification first, such as the mini Kazi. Normally the conversion of doubloons to free experience is at a ratio of 1 doubloon for 25 free experience. It has been known to go on sale at times at a rate of 1 to 35. To convert my 9,019,592 elite ship experience into free experience, at a 25 experience per 1 doubloon, the exchange will cost me $1,462.69. At which point I will have received 9,019,592 free experience to use for a search. This situation is getting crazy wargaming. Allow the extra elite ship experience to go into the commander skill set. And by the way wargaming, your web page from the premium shop for any amount of doubloons to purchase is incorrect. The highest amount you can go is 25,000 doubloons to purchase. You may want to correct that statement. Number 6. Away Fire and Rescue Party, Section 1. Away Fire and Rescue Party, Section 1. Most of us have seen videos showing ships on fire such as the carrier Ben Franklin, CV-13, damaged from kamikaze air attacks, and the Princeton, CVL-23, shown here on fire, being assisted by fellow ships in the task force, fighting those fires. Some were successful in putting out those fires, while others were not. I have mentioned in the past there is a need to be a process in World of Warships to assist your fellow teammate in a battle in fighting their fire. Well recently a super tester has commented in the World of Warships forums on the same idea, since the British battleships have introduced their high explosive characteristics within the World of Warships game. 
What I would like to see is a ring formed around the firefighting assisting ship, similar to the repairing from the operations of the weak scenarios. This will indicate that the fire assist range and suppress any fire on friendly ships within the ring. Having this feature in World of Warships would expose risk in gameplay, however overall it would promote teamwork which is what the game is about. Number 5. Number 4. Number 3. Number 2. The start screen set. Dead ahead. Torpedoes, dead ahead. The point I would like to highlight here is that multiple torpedo banks are a problem in world of warships in aiming and firing, this game mechanic needs to be fixed. And the multiple torpedo bank effect would be even worse, if this ship ever gets released again. Number 1 Now and then about every 6 to 10 months lag pops up its ugly head in World of Warships. 
It affects gunfire, torpedo firing, ship maneuvering, rounds hanging the sky, loading ports, black sky, etc. etc. One can say that the NFL kickers have competition for their hang time statistics when compared to artillery rounds in World of Warships. Point and click fails in the game at times and it's never consistent with any World of Warships server. To give some background, I have done everything possible in getting my home network up to par. I got a new router, new network card, new Cat 5e cables and even boosted my fiber optics bandwidth up. Of course none of it had a noticeable difference in gameplay during the lag. It wasn't until I noticed from the various forums that World of Tanks and World of Warplanes players too were complaining about the horrible game lag. So the problem is not isolated to the client side as Wargaming Tech Support wanted you to believe. And once the issue was addressed by the World of Tanks support within Wargaming, most of the lag went away. So in the end, will lag ever be eliminated and resolved? No. It will still happen from time to time, however when it does, it is the most annoying thing of World of Warships in gameplay. Please like or dislike the video, and as always let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree in what I have mentioned in this video on World of Warships gameplay annoyances. In addition, please add any comments on what annoys you in playing World of Warships. And again thank you for your time.